This episode is brought to you by the official recovery drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. For more information, you can use the QR code or you can click the link in the show notes below. Welcome to the Best Hour of the Day podcast with Roy Mangrum of Barbell Voodoo and this son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Roy's going to talk all about it, how he got started, how his buddy Jeremy was that kick in the butt that he needed, and then ultimately that led to this amazing company. This was probably one of the funniest <laughs> podcasts we've done so well, far. Well, the heat's so, on. Yeah, Jesus yeah, Christ. Everybody's, on everybody's sweating. <laughs> so uh, you might be sweating at the end of this podcast uh, as well watching it. And stick around because you'll find out how you can get Jason Ackerman to buy you a Barbell Voodoo shirt. Enjoy the show. You. Me? Yeah. He just doesn't want you to touch his board. Yeah. <laughs> you can't reach him from back here. <laughs> Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your host, Jason Fernandez. And me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. We are here in Springfield. Spring, Spring Hill. Hill. Oh, you had one it. job. You had one you had job. A, no, I still got to get his name Roy, right. Roy, Roy, <laughs> sir, Roy, you're going to fit in just fine here. We are Jesus here in Christ. Spring Hill, <laughs> Spring Hill, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, with Roy Mangrum. Yeah, yeah, you got that part. I right. got that right. That's, That's more important. important. 50, 50 50. Keep going. <laughs> Founder, owner of Voodoo. Jesus Christ. Barbell Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> I w- this guy. <laughs> Take two. Take Voodoo two. Donuts. Yes, Voodoo, Voodoo Donuts. Donuts. Barbell As you Voodoo. Can see. <laughs> one of the, I would say, most recognizable brands amongst CrossFitters. You show up at a competition. I was just telling you before we hit recorded, the CrossFit game specifically always got a sweet tent set up, yep. always got some cool t shirts, hard to walk by without picking up a t shirt. And we're, we're here to, to chat with you. We're really excited to meet you in person. Well, cool. Thanks. First and uh, Rip. Bob Ross. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to talk about I do want to talk about the design stuff you have, but Olive Drab. Olive Drab. <laughs> it's my new look. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the same thing. Um <laughs> probably just wears the same thing yeah. at all times. He always says I only, have, I only have one t shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um but tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you yeah, give us a little bit of the backstory. Yeah, so um it's kind of we we never set out to to be a clothing company. It was never the goal. What was the goal? Well, I'm gonna get to that point. <laughs> Did you so, talk to him? Did you set this up? <laughs> Are you punking me? <laughs> so, my background was powerlifting. Okay. You? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> In the donuts. <laughs> I see where you're going. So, uh, God, this would have been nine years ago, somewhere in there. I was trying to drop weight for a powerlifting competition. It was just getting harder and harder to drop weight as you get older. Very sedentary. Train, I sit at a desk all day. Making that cut to 130 pounds must have been challenging for you. Well, 308's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I'm flipping through ESPN or flipping through TV. ESPN comes on. It's a replay of the CrossFit Games. I see Rich. He has abs. He's strong. I'm like, hmm, I'll go give that a shot. Went to the local CrossFit gym. I'm training. I kind of start really digging it. I'm like, I'm going to do this powerlifting meet. It would be hilarious if I wore a CrossFit shirt because it's like it, especially nine years ago. That would spend yeah. some people up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody hates everybody, right? <laughs> Back in the day, though, like you said, nine, ten years ago, Dude. there was a was serious was rift, serious divide. Yeah, and uh, so he's like, "Yeah, grab one out from under the counter." So I'm digging out from under the counter. He had small, medium, large. I'm like, do I take two larges and make one <laughs> shirt? What do you want me to do? He's like, "I'll send you my logo. Just go print your own shirt." You had no printing experience at this point, or did None. you? Uh, so that was it. That's how it started. Printed one shirt. That's Where would amazing. you even print yeah. a shirt on, though? Where'd you even? Well, it cost me fifty dollars, which is not economical to print one shirt. <laughs> uh, that was the first lesson. First business learned. lesson. Yeah. You're like margins are a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so printed the one shirt, did the meet. I came back and I was like, "Man, his shirt's kind of." Did you win? What is winning? Mm. Showing up with a great attitude. Typically coming in first. Yeah. <laughs> Typically coming in no, first place. I, I came in third place. Okay. What, what, were, your, what were your lifts? It, well, it was a bench only meet. Okay. Um, 225? I have the video to prove it. Okay. Uh, and I really thought, I was like, I'm going to smash everybody. This was equipped. So you wore a bench okay. shirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was two ply. 
I went to the meet. I was like, I'm going to hit 600. I ended up only getting 565. My, that's so strange. That was third Because we know what my PR is. Yeah. 566. 566. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Anyway, so I, I was like, oh, this has got to be enough for first. No, that was third. Wow. What Seven, was first? Like 730-something. Whoa. It's yeah. legit. No, it's not. It's that's not real. Not, <laughs> There's no way that's real. <laughs> Somebody hitting 730? He was as big as this room. It's the oh, biggest dude okay. I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, that's my, uh, the, the powerlifting coach in my high school, Gary Frank, he's like one of the, he's an old mm-hmm. school guy. Like, I mean, it's like one of the first guys to ever break 2,500 pounds. But that he, I've watched him bench rep seven plus. That's like, insane. It's insane. How much? But, does I mean, it? he was four hundred pounds and six yeah. four. I mean, he was a he was a Goliath of a man. Like he was just frightening to look. It at. just and it hurts your joints. Yeah. So yeah. I've torn both of my triceps. Just chasing six hundred. I'd never got it. Well, how much does that the two ply shirt add to your bench? Uh, I could do probably three reps of four hundred five raw. Yeah. It's, it's significant to answer your yeah, question. It's, yeah, it's a difference. But it's yeah. also a skill, right? You can't it just is. Oh, slap on a shirt and think you're going to add 200 pounds to your bench. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all technique. It's like catching a snatch. You know, anybody can power snatch. Catch it in the bottom, balance, stand right back up. It's different. What's what's one big thing you have to learn putting, you know, in other words, if you're benching pretty consistently and you get up to 225, 315, whatever, and slap on a shirt. Mm-hmm. What's like one thing that we don't know as non power lifters that you have to change in your technique to maximize that shirt? You pull the bar to your chest, not lower it. So you really have to be under control, thinking mm-hmm. about using your lats. It's all lats. All lats, bringing the bar down. And then on the way back up, what are you thinking differently? You flex your lats first. So, like if I'm here and if I just flex my lats, see how my arms move? Yeah. That creates the momentum to drive it out with your triceps. Gotcha. So it gets it gets the barbell moving back in the right yeah. direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't you treat that a little bit differently when you're raw? Uh no, I didn't. No, it's very similar. But you get better at using the shirt yeah. to add weight to it. And you know, when you're raw, it's it's more about using leg drive and in your back and it's an overall The position's different too, isn't it? Right when you sit on or uh at least to some degree. Not from, from a, well, I didn't because okay. I was a lot of people do. You know, less arch and things right. like that. That's, but, that's what I was referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I trained with a shirt for right. so many years. I mean, I haven't had one on years and years yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. But I still set up exactly the same way I did then. Gotcha. Very cool. Yeah. So so you, you print out this one shirt. Did you get any eyeballs on it because it was a CrossFit shirt? No, uh, nobody gave a shit. Nobody but, gave uh, a shit. But, <laughs> but the idea. But was the forward. idea was there. I thought it was going to be hilarious. Nobody, nobody cared. Uh, had you won, maybe. No, 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 nobody would have still give nobody, a shit. Yeah, no. okay. They just, I don't know, nobody cares. So how did that transition from this idea of like, I'm going to make my own shirt so, for $50 and so, to I'm going to start this really unique Well, it was, brand, it was like, apparel brand. it's like a lot of gyms, right? It's just red shirt, black logo, one color. I was like, man, that's kind of lame. Yeah. What if you jazz it up a little bit to promote your gym? So I was just like, just randomly, like you have spare time and my mind just the way it works you'll just start thinking of things and i'll just come up with an idea so i went back to the back of the gym and i'm just spitting out you know you should do this what if you did this and i've got this idea for a shirt and this idea of course they just you know blew me off or whatever this is at the gym you're referring at to the gym, and yeah. what, what boxes by the way uh crossfit combustion is just literally combustion. Right the road gotcha down. got it okay um and uh this I always trained with the same guy. Like if we were squatting, he'd always end up at my rack or would be in front of each other in a wad or whatever the case was. So he ended up being the guy I was always talking to. Well, you know, I got this idea for a shirt, whatever. He's like one day, probably a month in, two months in. Why haven't you just printed the shirt? What are you waiting yeah, on? Yeah, stop talking about it. Be yeah, about he called it. me out and yeah. I'm like, damn, dude, okay. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. That hurts. And, uh, <laughs> If if you want somebody to do that to you regularly, Fern is great. I'm happy. Yeah, we'll just we'll just text each other. That's cool. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, well, dude, I probably I don't think I can afford it. I it's just fifty got, bucks a shirt. <laughs> well, no shit, dude. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, well, I can afford two shirts. But I we had two mortgages because I just gotten married, so we still was trying to sell my house. And we had her house. He's like, uh, well, how much could it possibly be? I said, well, fifty dollars shirt, it's a couple damn grand. I was like, I don't know, man. Like, 250 bucks, we can buy a batch. 
that afternoon, got home, got in the shower, got out of the shower. It was a Saturday. I'll never forget it. Somebody's knocking at the door. My wife, for whatever reason, will never answer the door. She comes in there goes, somebody's at the door. I run to the door, and it's him. Your buddy from the gym. Buddy from, I didn't even know some bitch knew where I lived, which is really (laughs) weird. Okay? I've only known him a couple months. I'm like, okay, stalker. Open the door. He's like, what's up, man? I'm like, what's going on? Hands me 150 bucks. Goes, print those shirts. We're in business. That's awesome. I'm like, son of a bitch. He called me out. (laughs) Printed them. Took them to the gym. Like three weeks later when they came in, had enough money for 28 shirts. Sold all 28. At the gym. One day. One Saturday morning class, yep. two hour block. I was like, oh, okay. We took that money, doubled down, didn't sell out the second time, but everybody I knew was inside that four walls. They already had the shirt. They don't need two. Right. right? right. I'm like, ah, second design. <laughs> yeah. Beer in a bottle. Beer in Brilliant. a bottle. Brilliant. Beer so, in a can. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's before, we get it, before we get ahead of ourselves, what shirt was that? Uh, it's actually in our conference room. Uh, the very first shirt I ever printed for whatever reason, my wife kept it. We'll grab smart. it. We'll grab yeah. it a little. Smart. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. a snapshot of it. It's the word impossible with an X through. Iron oh Man. yeah. We were literally oh, just yeah. talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was the very first shirt. It's framed in there, right? It's framed yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My wife. So that's a first way run. Way smarter than I am. First run. First run. Very first shirt. And are that's you awesome. still friendly with this guy? Yeah. We're still business partners. Oh, he's a. Okay. Nice. Yeah. What's he's, his name? Jeremy Gossett. So everybody needs a Jeremy in their lives, right? Yeah. Like I'm still looking that- for one. <laughs> Dude, he is. <laughs> <laughs> giving you that kick in the butt. Yes. Kick in the butt. Not the I damn like camera it. guy, for God's sake. <laughs> That's a bare what a, minimum name. We can't what, a, uh, <laughs> what a great cost this of entry. Bitch don't even know what we're, who I am and what we're doing well, here. In fairness, Katie ghosted us. <laughs> Katie she ghosted failed. us. For God's sake, text Katie. See what she's doing right now. <laughs> she's, running, she's running 13 miles for some reason. <laughs> so you, you, what, the second show? was the same shirt but a second run yeah we did a second run then we did did you even change the design. color of the t-shirt mm, no of course okay. not because i don't know what i'm doing i paid 50 dollars for the first shirt <laughs> and why would you take it by for me come but on one thing that it struck me as an affiliate owner you ordered 28 shirts and you sold out how did you even determine the sizing of those 20 because in theory you might as well 28 divided by four i'll do seven of each yeah there's not a lot of smalls there's very not a lot of stri- XLs. Very strategic. So you did think a little bit about I'm gonna, this. I'm going to tell you all the secret to sizing your shirts. Let's hear it. There's a hold dart, on, hold on. There's Everybody a dart, pay in. Yeah, pay there, real close attention. Yeah. In our conference room, we have a dart board. <laughs> you just throw the dart. Whatever it hits first, that's your first. Like you order 20 of those. Okay. Could be smalls, could be extra large. You don't know. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. There's Trust no the way process. to figure you know, that out. Hey, you know what that's called? <laughs> science. Science. Yeah, it's it's called science. Is that still how you do? It? You must have an idea of what shirt sizes. I have no clue what I'm even doing here right now. What are you talking about? I like it. This is how no, we I'm are. Just, this is I'm exactly just, our strategy. True, here, I've <laughs> tried. I've tried every way of tracking and trying to figure it out. Crack the code. Yeah, you'll you'll sell out of larges. Well, like y'all just saw, right. we were out of right. a bunch two of larges and a, and a medium right here. Yeah. yeah. You'll order 100 large. They will sit there for a month. you not sell one. You'll go buy a bunch of mediums. Now the all the damn larges go, are selling. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? Just give up. When you have so many SKUs. <laughs> just, so don't many, it. <laughs> just don't do business anymore, everybody. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. No, just buy a bunch of everything. That's yeah. what I do. Well, you have so many different styles and SKUs here, right? So you're, you're constantly moving. So that second shirt doesn't do as well, but eventually. No, the, do, the second run didn't. Uh, but the second design did. So this is funny. If you're trying to start a, a t-shirt business, you go to these CrossFit comps. Of course, have y'all ever run comps? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Many. Oh yeah. So there's always a vendor fee. This at, at, at this time, you know, nine years ago, it was going to be like 250 bucks. We didn't have 250. We just spent it on the second shirts. round of shirts. Spent right? it on four shirts. So and I was friendly with the people. I'm like, oh, I can't afford it. She's like, oh, well. Maybe next time. I'm like, okay, bitch. (laughs) So I had two boxes of shirts in my trunk of my car. So I threw all the T-shirts on this shoulder, the the tank tops on this shoulder. I walked around. I was like, what are you? You a large? You a medium? Oh, you're a medium? Check this out. You bootlegged it. I bootlegged them all day long. That's awesome. Yep, that's That's how it started. That's really cool. What competition was that? Uh, Two to Tango. Local? Here in Franklin. Yeah, Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. What was your background before shirts? Motorcycle gang? 
What, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I actually, I'm in the Oak Ridge Boys right now. I sing uh, it, back up. Yeah. No, I'm just. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, yeah. This is gonna go Get deep. that guitar. Like, <laughs> keep going. This is your bluegrass. This is amazing. What did you do before you you started no, Bob I've been in the mortgage industry for 21 years. Still okay. doing that a little bit. I work from home. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So you show up at this first competition, sell out the t-shirts, the tanks. Yeah. Is it full steam ahead at that point? Yeah, it, it was pretty much at that point. We knew, um, you know, it's always that like proof of concept, right? Does people think the way you think or do they like the things you like? Because you, you, know, you may have an idea that you think is just baller, and I've had a dozen of them that are garbage, but you don't know they're garbage till you put it out. Yeah. And then we've had some designs that were like, this will never sell. We, the Golden Girls, we did a oh, Golden Girls Oh, that's great. What, you didn't think that would be a hit? I did not. I, just, on, I mean, I you timed like it right around months. Betty White. No, that, I mean, the we've passing had it for of Betty four White. years. We've had it for that long. Mm -hmm. It just took off because it of... It took off a, another round. It, literally, it, it runs about every other quarter. It'll just it's pick cyclical. up steam. It's, it's the weirdest thing. So, so that was one you weren't expecting. What was one you were expecting to do well that didn't do as well as you believed? Mr. Rogers. You know, that the right over here? Yeah. Right I think here. that's great. People yeah. are not in I mean, it sells, but it's not. Biggest? No. What's your best seller ever? Um, probably going to be this one after the show. After the show today, yes, it will. That's probably one of the, that's probably the top three. Death Rower? Golden, Golden Girls. Golden Girls is the top. Yeah, though. Death Rower is pretty hot right now. Yeah, it's, that's, it's getting a lot that of That pops steam. up on my Instagram every day. You're welcome. Yeah, I love it. And I've <laughs> seen, we, both Fern and I travel quite a, a yeah. lot. I've seen many people wearing that shirt at level one cool. seminars. So how did you come up with the, the styling? Because I think that's something that's really unique, unique to your brand yeah. um, is the, the art behind it. We're just, I'm, I'm kind of a humorous. I'm I don't not, take anything not serious. Not, up yeah, up yeah, not at all. I know. My wife tells me that a lot. But um, <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's just my personality, mm. you know. Um, and it wasn't like. Even though I, it was kind of like after the fact that I looked at different clothing brands when we started getting out there and going, everybody's very similar as far as, you know, certain colors, you know, skulls, daggers, blah, 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 right? What if we just go the opposite yeah. of, of everybody else? Either everybody will love it. Everybody will hate it. We've had a lot of this conversation yeah. over the past week about yeah. numerous, numerous yeah. ideas. So. Yeah. But I think you're absolutely right, especially we remember that time. Maybe not a lot of the listeners have been around CrossFit for 10 years, but it was basically, especially... Affl affliction had a heavy, uh, heavy affliction hand was on, a big the, one. on the font in the CrossFit community. But it, was, yeah. it was very much like... It looked cool, but nobody knew what the name of your gym was. It was good to read the flatter <laughs> page. No, it was very CrossFit box, funny slogan on the back, yeah. especially 2007 era. Then it became a little more affliction based. Like, let's try to get as much design on this Edgy. shirt yeah, it was, it was as possible. Lot. And I think to this day, like I was saying about the CrossFit Games, you guys stand out. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, and, and we have an affiliation with many, you know, clothing companies. We support a lot of clothing companies. But the, the humor is what makes you guys stand out, and it pops. Yeah, it's just being different, man. What's, what's the, so what's the genesis behind Voodoo and the Florida Lee? So I originally thought... You, this was like Louisiana based. Yeah. Okay. So, um, because it's the greatest state. So, in the country, he's from. But, yeah, it's okay. Well, <laughs> so my wife's uncle's from New Orleans. He's okay. actually a realtor. In there we go. We were trying to come up with an idea. All right. What are we going to call this now that we're making a brand? Right. I come up with the most asinine names you could ever think of, but I always came back to something New Orleans because we went, we were going like four times a year, especially okay. at this point. And I just, I fell in love with the city, loved everything about it. And so, like, for this has been months, and I'm, like, racking my brain trying to come up with a name. They all suck. And we're sitting at dinner with her with her uncle, he, literally between bites, because I'm telling him all this stuff. And he goes, what about Voodoo Barbell? So it was the reverse of it. Yep. So I instantly go for the domain, it's taken. I'm like, shit, it's taken. He's like, well, just flip it. 
Like genius. <laughs> Whoa. So yeah. See this? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I just, I literally, okay, let me check. It's available. It's available. Like, well, there you go. Hi, Rob, you're welcome. Well, he takes his next right. bite. Just Dinner was on you, I hope. He's like, you want to be huh? my business coach? <laughs> yeah. Dinner was on you, I hope. Did you make him pay for it, too? I don't know how many pay for it. Yeah, yeah. smart really? man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's a business. Other money. people's money. <laughs> so, and the, so Barbell Voodoo becomes the name of the brand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When was the first sh- shirt that you put online somewhere? Because at first, you're only at oh. competitions, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I know the answer to that. Um. Okay, well, let me reframe. You, you're going to competitions. When did you realize, hey, if I can do this online, is because I imagine... This grows yeah. from that. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, now I need to fulfill <clears throat> shipping orders. Yeah. I, I, man, I don't remember those. De- there's like certain, th- like, there's a lot of it that's blurry. and it, It's like owning a box, right? Yeah. You, you yeah. Just, it's, and you just follow your heart so a little hard, bit. so fast. Right? And I remember, like, because I'll get, you know, people starting, you know, a company and they'll ask me for advice. I'm like, dude, just put your head down for three years and don't, don't listen. Don't look up. Don't. You know, if somebody's telling you you're wasting your time, just give it three years. One year is never going to work. There's too many ups and downs. You're still trying to figure it out. It takes three years to get momentum, especially with clothing. It's it's hard. And did you find that to be true? It About three years from impossible true. shirt? Why he just said that. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to listen to this podcast? <laughs> could, uh, if you give me your phone, I'll download I'm going to be. I'm going to be honest with you. We did. We did some spicy wings last night. Uh, uh, 90 percent of my effort is going into but <laughs> holding controlling, it. Controlling, yeah. controlling his bowel yeah. movements. Yeah. yeah, I'm somewhat paying attention. <laughs> but you are sweatier than I was eating the wings Dude, last I'm night. Fucking fat and I'm hot right now. What are you talking about? Are you still doing CrossFit? I mean, I load these boxes. Um, Constantly very functional movements, high intensity, yeah. doing that. Um, Nature has no obligation. Yeah, I, I, I got away from it, and I hate it. And I'll tell you, for me, what, um, and everybody's going to disagree with this, but fuck it. Um, <laughs> You'll lose some customers, yeah, no big deal. No, that's okay. But it's my story, so it's relevant. Um, I started coaching just because I loved it. It's a quick way to lose your fitness. That's what I tell every coach after that. Yeah. I'm like, we talk about it a lot. You want to lose your fitness? Start coaching. Yeah. And for me, the guy who owned the gym, he just wanted me more and more and more. And it was like ten classes a week. Well, meanwhile, you're a, a real estate guy. You're trying to yeah, get that's this not new a light, business. That's not a light load. Yeah. yeah. No. It's forty classes a month. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of, you know, every single weekend. Math. Yeah. You're at competitions. Yeah, you every <laughs> single weekend, <laughs> we're at a competition. During the week. You know, I have a wife too, and then I've still got the job, and it just, I ran out of hours. Mm-hmm. And I put myself on the back burner, gained weight. I eventually, now I have a home gym, which I'm trying oh, to get, nice. get the ball rolling, but it's tough. It is tough. And, and one thing I saw when I walked in here is you have a whiteboard with many, many events <laughs> yeah. on it. And I think that's something I didn't even consider recently. It's like to be a successful brand in the CrossFit world, there's so many competitions happening, and that's probably all relatively local, like driving distance. Well, we have so we have nine reps now so around the country. Yeah, so California, Texas, Florida. There's three here, one Alabama. Is that am I close to the number? Probably give or yeah, take well, three. Yeah, yeah <laughs> give or somebody got left out. Now. <laughs> you forgot me. Um, so I mean, we're at like seven events almost every week. That's a that's a lot. Well, yeah, every lot. week, every week. I mean, that's what, I mean, like this, these Ooh, are those shirts. Yeah. These are those, that's a bootstrap brand right there. Like just yeah. on, like on the ground. Well, done. cause think about it. Like as many ads as y'all see every time you go on your Instagram and, and just look at how vast this whole, the community is, there's a lot of brands that sell t-shirts and no matter how great you do at the CrossFit games or any of these events, there's still people that don't know who you are and who, that you even exist. So, best way to find them, get in their face. Well, and I would say, I've seen, like I said, I see you on social media all the time. I've mm-hmm. truthfully never bought one of your shirts online. But, you every year at the, <laughs> no, but every year at the games, I walk past you. Yeah. I'm like, okay, got to go back there before the end. Yeah. So, I think, do you, uh, well, the question is, do you do more business the grassroots way at competitions versus your online no, store? It's, it's about 50-50. Okay. Oh, that's actually really that's good. Pretty good, like yeah. That. So, Two th- this now this is weird. Um, 2018, 
we were like 75, 25, 75 events, 25 online. So going in 2019, I was like, man, that's not healthy. One of these days, it's going to bite us. So we really focused in 2019, getting to 50-50. Timely. 2020 hits. Yeah. And we were lucky. We had already. Now, I would have demolished yeah, your that's business. Not, that, but that's not lucky. Right, Smart, like it, right. It just it, the timing happened to yeah. happened to coincide with that. But you were looking at the right things and saying, "There's a deficiency here. Yeah. What can I do to correct that?" And we were having this conversation this morning, which is, it's not really luck. It's just that the timing happens to align. But you could have very well not have been doing that, and then it would have been bad luck, right? Yeah, but it's not. It's not bad luck. It's like, hey, I was, I was course correcting. Things happen, and you're either prepared for those things or not. Well, you sound way smarter than I do. Uh, well, I practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a show. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's a show. Um, no, but that's that's cool, and I th- that's something that we're always trying to educate boxers, box owners on, coaches on, is that you should constantly be reevaluating because we don't know what's coming down. Man, you don't. Yeah, and, and you need to start anticipating those things. We need to start thinking, okay, what down the road is going to happen? What 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 would the, what would a fatal blow to my business be? And it would be like, oh, well, if we could not go to events anymore, like, mm-hmm. shit, we better get online ready to go. Like, but, what happens if that goes away? And I tell you, when so we were getting ready for the Arnold Classic. I've told this story. We're I would getting, imagine that was a huge <clears throat> event for you. Yeah, so, like, your booth at the Arnold, if, you've, if they've never been there, a booth at the Arnold, our booth is $5,500, 10 by 20. We had just built a big metal rig, so it was going to be the first time it was going to be shown. That was two grand, twenty five hundred. Yeah, I was going to say at least three grand. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, all the banners and all the new metal grids and stuff. I don't know. I don't even know how much adding that up. Travel to the Arnold, all <laughs> yeah. that stuff, right? We had, we had to buy a trailer to haul the ri- the the new rig, so that was forty five hundred dollars. Oh, you're 15 grand easy in the hole in this already. Well, then you have to have the stuff to sell, which was 10 grand. So we bought 10 grand worth of stuff. All this stuff. So this trailer's packed and ready to roll. <clears throat> this was, we were leaving on Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Tuesday, another clothing company sends me a text that said, hey, have you seen this? It was the video where they were announcing they were uh, canceling the Arnold. Of course, you freak out. You're like, okay, not, not good. You know, with the with the clothing stuff, I'm like, well, okay, I've got about 30 days before those invoices are due, but the rest of it is already out of the account. I got to figure something out. Um, and you you just kind of digest it as quick as you can. Next morning, I woke up and I knew what my plan was. I already knew that you know. I'm not the only clothing brand. There's a thousand vendors at the Arnold for one. All these other people are going to be in the same boat I'm in or similar. They're going to put up a big sale. Well, the Arnold starts on Friday. I'll put up my sale on Thursday. I made my money Thursday. Made 10 grand. Online. Yep. 10 grand one day. And you didn't have to travel or anything for that. No, I thought I was cool. Was, I thought that was badass. <laughs> that is badass. <laughs> it was over here shipping packages for two days, but... I mean, you got to do what yeah. you got to do. Are you yeah. Shopify? You got to flex. No, uh, we're not on Shopify anymore. We're on big commerce. But, but you got to like, were you getting just like ding, ding, ding? Constantly. Yeah. yeah. It was constant. Yeah. That's awesome. And you're yeah. like sweet every yeah. time. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. In a second, I want to talk about kind of some things for people to know about a parable. We are going to take a quick break. We'll come back to that. What's up, guys? Fern, one of the things we always talk about, one of the main purposes of owning an affiliate is impact. If we think about the hierarchy for a business, impact is at the top of that. If we build the businesses that we want, if we develop the coaches that we want, we build the team, we build the community, one of the things that we can have inside the walls of the box is impact in the broader community. And somebody who's crushing it in that is Trish. So tell me about your motto for your gym. Uh, so when we first opened, we made it one village, one community, because I wanted to be the CrossFit affiliate that wasn't just the CrossFit facility, but like, we did things within the community, whether that means, you know, doing, working with the kids in the area. So we work with a ton of the sports teams. We work with the kids in the school. Uh, we do fundraising events for the local community. We have business owners that whenever we do events outside of the gym, we try to make sure we give back to them. Uh, with the move, we made sure we used all of our members to like paint and, right. and use any vendor we possibly could within the house cool. of our gym. That's what it's all about, guys. Build a box of your dreams. You can have impact in the larger community and have fun while you're doing it. Yeah. Okay, we're back. So 
I do want to talk about what's one or two things. So we're going to talk specifically to box owners. What's one or two things box owners need to know about apparel that they don't know? I, do you okay. even do you even deal with boxes and printing? Yeah, so specifically so, the boxes. Um, here's a funny story how we I like this funny ended stories. up happening. I personally was at this event. This would have been like four or five years ago at this point. It's January. It's coldest event I've ever been at in my life. It was, and we were outside. This uh, gym owner comes up to me. He's got his shirt on. It looked like it was vinyl. It was, it was bad. Uh, and he's like, man, do y'all print shirts for gyms? I'm like, no, I mean, we can, but, you know, it's not, we don't advertise it. But, it, you know, our friend, like, Combustion, right? we print our local friends and right. comps and stuff like that. He's like, uh, well, just asking you, what would you charge me to print this shirt? I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, it's a tri blend, you know, a couple colors. I don't know, like nine fifty. He's like, How much would I have to how many would I have to buy? I don't know, twenty? He's like, hmm. I'm like, can I ask you how many you bought? He's like, I had to buy a hundred. Okay. What'd what you, did he pay? Twelve dollars. Fifteen. I was gonna say Fifteen dollars. Wow. Fifteen dollars. So I'm like crushed. I'm like, man, these gym owners are getting screwed yes yeah. they're getting screwed bad so um i got home that weekend called my printer and i was like let's work out a deal here's what i'm going to do i'm going to bring these guys to the table i already spend several hundred thousand a year with you give them my price okay so that's what you started doing minimum is 12 they get contract pricing no screen fees, no art fees, no setup fees. You buy ten shirts at nine dollars. It's ninety dollars. Do you do they do the design as well? Mm-hmm. They do everything. Okay. Yep. And the, the whole reason is apparel should be a revenue source. It shouldn't be, right. you so. know, a stack of small sitting in the corner that, you know, because, you know, mo- and I don't know about you guys, but around here, like most gyms are, you know. 90 members to mm-hmm. 140. Mm-hmm. That's pretty standard. That's a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not going to get 100% buy-in on a, a Murph shirt. No. You're probably going to get, let's say, 25 to... I was going to say 30%. Yeah, 25, 30%. Okay, well, then you don't need 100 shirts. You need 30 shirts. It's, it's easy. And, this, is, and, this is kind of like Marcus's jam, too. Like, like he kind of educated me on this, but, like, you can speak to that better than I can. I don't know what you're talking about. Just like, the, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. That didn't work. That pitch didn't work. Um, I, it, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's been a huge sore spot for a lot of affiliate owners for since the beginning of all of this because it is such a lay down opportunity for branding for getting mm-hmm. buy in from people. People want it. It's like I need workout clothes anyway. Yeah. It like checks all the boxes, right? And yet, there the way it's been kind of introduced to box owners on how to from. Uh, purchasing to maintaining inventory to how they market and sell it, their expectations, all of that is, I mean, sideways is not right. Like you said, they're getting hosed. And so, you know, one of the things that we've been teaching affiliates for a long time is how to manage that better and really just shifting the perspective on, on what this really represents to the business. Like you said, it should be a revenue source. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be anything anything more than it really is, yeah. which is figure out what it is that your members want that that's going to help the business grow and then find a partner vendor, someone who's going to be able to work with you in getting a price that's reasonable, gets you a good consistent product. And then it's about putting it in front of people in the right, mm-hmm. in the right times. Right. In the right, ways. right. Yeah. So we started when, when this all, the ball started rolling. So we just, we put out like templates. So like right now it's a Murph template. We'll do it, you know, on um, uh, 4th of July and, and open and different things like that. Uh, so the gym don't even have to like, the gym owner doesn't have to think. Because mm-hmm. that's the hard part. Like, here's, yeah. Here's it's three options. It's one thing to find the vendor, but once you yeah. have the vendor, it's like, well, how do I come up with cool yeah, shirts? Yeah, a designer. Yeah. 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 We hand you the designs, like change the color print, change the color shirt, whatever you want. But here's the design. We'll, we'll take it from here. We'll add your name to it, your logo, whatever. No brainer. Yeah. And uh, so we work with probably about four to 500 gyms now. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. wow. That's, so a lot. that's a lot. Yeah. But I mean, again, it's, it's easy for them. They're getting at a price point where they can actually make some money, pay for a class, pay for a coach, 
pay a lot bill. Yeah. You know, whatever. I mean, or way more than that. I mean, more importantly, just get people to rep your, I mean, you put all this work into running an affiliate. Yeah. I mean, you want, you want to put cool stuff on people. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not this, this is people. not exactly what people are looking for. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, people want to represent their gym. Yeah. Right. We want to talk about this. Oh yeah, we've, we want to we've talk avoided about, that the whole time. But uh, yeah. before we get to that, <laughs> before we talk about your your big endeavor coming up, we were we were kind of talking amongst ourselves. What's it like slapping on what I would imagine is a trademarked or copyrighted person or show? Yeah. How does lot, that go down? You spend a lot in legal fees. So are you <laughs> are you a ask for forgiveness, not permission kind of guy? Mm-hmm. Oh, a hundred percent. So so there you, is, is Steve Carell giving you text like, dude. Send him a free shirt. Yeah, yeah. just hey so, Steve, I got you. What's your address? So there is there is um, I just forgot the term. <sighs> anyway, if you, if you if you switch a person to a caricature, there you get the the parody law. It's covered under parody law. Okay, cartoon for cartoon. I found out that's not covered. What did you do? That was a cartoon. Like, uh, I did a Homer Simpson shirt. A lot oh, back. Yeah. got it. It's that one. That one over there. Yep. Yeah. You're not allowed to sell that anymore or you have to pay well, for here's, the right? Well, here's, they did not hit me. It was um, my uh, payment processor that was like, we don't want. I won't let you uh, sell it. Yeah. 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 We don't want to be liable for this. And had guy. you already yeah. printed them? Oh, of course. <laughs> so are you sitting on those or are you, those are maybe a competition? Gotcha. Gotcha. Cash so, only. You know, you, know, we, you know what we talked about earlier? You went too deep. I went too deep. You went too deep. deep. You, went too you deep. see I'm sweating? Yeah. Yeah. That was sweating. one of those questions. Yeah. Turn the lights on him. So because this is Bob Ross, we all see it's Bob Ross, but it went from a real life image to a character of it or Michael it's Scott covered, and yeah. Dwight True. It's covered under yeah, the law. Yeah, it's covered under cool. uh, parody law. Cool. So That's tell cool. us a little bit more about the Music City Fit Expo. Yeah. So um, a few years, well, back in 2019 was the last year that, that, they actually held the Music City Fit Expo here in Nashville. So at that time, it was at the uh, Vanderbilt campus, college campus, in the indoor. Uh, By the way, I'm just recognized you guys have matching tattoos. That's really cute. Yeah, we planned that. Yep. Yeah. I called before. I was like, hey, you want to get a tattoo? <laughs> yeah. You've been matching. I've been trying to get him to get a matching yeah, tattoo for years. You've been asking me forever. I decided to go with a stranger. <laughs> yeah. <It's fine. laughs> so, um, Anyway, they held it at the indoor practice facility, uh, football practice facility. They had a CrossFit comp on one end, a strongman comp on the other, vendors in the middle, uh, and it grew every single year. Well, 2020 happens, they canceled it. 2021 happens, they had to cancel it because they were still doing the gathering restrictions. The guy who was putting it on owned Nashville Fit Magazine. He ended up selling the magazine. He just got out of the fitness world pretty much altogether. Another buddy of mine, uh, Terry Bargy, he's also a clothing, has a clothing brand. Good old Terry Bargy. Good old Terry. He uh, he says, hey, would you be interested in helping me resurrect this, you know, this Fit Expo? And I was like, man, it was, sounds like a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun. So we picked it up. We ran with it. Um, we put booths on sale January 5th. I sold 145 days. We have a CrossFit comp. Um, it's almost sold out. Strongman comp. Seven uh, group fitness classes, yoga classes, different things like that. And uh, it's under 70,000 square feet. It's the biggest it's ever been. That's awesome. At the music or at the uh, Nashville Fairgrounds. This when year. is that? June 18th. June 18th. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then, so what? talk to me about a little bit about the the... the CrossFit event specifically, what, what's the team, uh, what's so the format it, look like? It is a winner take all. Bring your top eight athletes from your box, four RX, four scaled. And you each gym can only submit one team. Four and four. Yep. Four RX, four scaled. The, the, the workouts throughout the day will be done by all eight people. Mm-hmm. And this cumulative score? Yes. Cool. That's so you'll fine. be the, the, the yeah. so do, so you'll represent the, the scale team the sk- from best hour. So the scaled, the they they compete with the RX or is there separate? They're separate teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same team, right? But your the the scaled score and the RX score is added Got it. together. Okay. Yeah. I just I was um, I thought I was I was imagining like eight man workouts. I was like, this sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, that'd be bad to run, <laughs> wouldn't it? Uh, but like the 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 prizes, they're they're again, it's winner take all. 
So, like, there's two equipment companies that have donated $500 worth of equipment each. Um, there's a, uh, like, a cryo company that's donated some stuff. That's cool. We've donated a $500 gift card for the team. Um, our printer is doing, like, custom shirts for that gym. There's a lot of different so cool it's things. It's going to be, like, almost like a battle of the boxes. That's exactly what it's called. Did you already know that? Is no, that I did not. Thing? That's literally what it's called. I copyrighted that, and you can't use a cartoon <laughs> you to mother. cover that. You're There's no parody law yeah. there. It's a different yeah. logo. <laughs> and you're making your big powerlifting comeback? No. Oh. Yeah. No. Why'd I thought you make... you're coming back. I thought you were coming um, back that no, day. Like, I wish was, I could. Is it po- wait, Eddie is it powerlifting or strongman? Uh, powerlifting. Powerlifting. Yeah. All right. Okay. What's All your right. best dead? My dad was never great. 560. Yeah. 705 squat. That isn't great. You're right. Um... No, just kidding. Well, how many? How many? Uh, really how many? Freaking strong. How many? What's the What's the powerlifting scene around here? Is, are you gonna have like a pretty good turnout for the powerlifting? Well, it's strongman for the. We don't. We don't. We don't have a powerlifting this year. Okay. I'm hoping so to have. Strongman. Well, that's what I was asking. Yeah, so the strongman, strongman actually is really there's. It's a. It's pretty big here in okay. in Nashville area. I think he said he was already almost sold out when I thought to him okay. yesterday too. But it's like it's chicks, it's dudes, and I mean they got all kinds of cool stuff. They got these rain cans that are. Weighted for the yoke walks, Ooh. which oh. is Slap them up. great advertising. Yeah, so it's it's going to be super cool. I That's think awesome. They're doing a truck deadlift. What's the uh, you have any uh, anticipated like attendance as far as spectators? And everything? my goal is two thousand. Okay, uh, right now we're at a thousand. So oh, I mean, and you're uh-huh. two months out. Two so months yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah definitely time That's for awesome. people. There's still spots left if a team decided to sign up. Yeah, there's some spots to sign up for the for all the events. Um, vendor spaces are, are way past sold out. We're on a wait list now, oh. so uh, which is good. Uh, and then we're going to sell tickets for attendees until the fire marshal shuts us down. Nice. nice. Like so this episode will obviously we'll make sure it's out before then so people will still be able to sign up. Cool. How, Appreciate it. Nuancy, how do you make sure a team doesn't send good athletes to the scale division? Uh, they're doing some kind of questionnaire and stuff hey, like that. Hey, are you a scaled athlete? Yes, I yes, am. I am. Yeah, yep. yeah. I, I don't know. So One question, uh, question. the cool, the cool part for me is I don't run any of the events, so that's on. You're them. just they in can, charge. I just I rented the building. I'm doing the expo, and then each person is in charge of their own. How many event. shirts do you show up with for something like that? For us, oh man, well we have a a ten by thirty booth. Probably about that's the size lot, of yeah. this room. No, no, not it'll quite. be. It'll be longer it, than this yeah. room. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a Michael Scott shirt. I had to. I had to. But how, and what do you think you'll show up with as far as apparel? I mean, there'll be so much stuff there. And you'll be at the games? Oh, yeah. yeah this we, year, so nice. we'll see you there? Yeah, yeah we, we bought our booth for the games. Like We paid for it in like August, right after the games. Nice. Did you get yeah. something pretty quickly after the previous year to get? Yeah, and what's cool, too, and yeah, I mean, you may not know that, but if the longer you're a vendor, like it's literally you get carte blanche. Just like, where do you want? Like yeah, last taken year, care of. Yeah, yeah, last year was like uh, you were on the. I want to say the left side, pretty pretty in a good spot. Like you'd walk. Yeah. I walked past you very often. Last is uh, uh, was it wit? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they had that. You were kind of like right across from them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so when you walk in the main vendor village, you guys were yeah. like right there, kind of like to the left. Right yeah. There. yeah. So I think we're in the same spot again. This that's year. cool. Nice. That's cool. And and. It's it's valuable for you. I know for a lot of people, yeah. sponsoring at the yeah. CrossFit Games is is pricey. Oh, it's exp- yeah. like a, our booth is seventeen thousand there. Yeah, Whoa. it's not it's not cheap. That's yeah. dude, it's not that's cheap. A, yeah, that's, that's prime time. That's like a going. Yeah, to yeah no, it, it's I mean it's well worth it. I mean clearly right here, right? Yeah. It's well worth it. And, and I would imagine part of it is you would, in an ideal scenario, make your money back plus. But oh, it's yeah. also yeah. about yeah, well the recognition you, for the. Entire year, one hundred percent. You 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 go into it with the attitude of, this is marketing money. If I can just break even, I win. Right. Because all these new people and you're handing them here, take this right. with your shirt right. coupons, or coupon sales, right. Yeah. You're looking so you're, for follow on orders. You're getting that. But every year, knock on, for Micah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> That's how they do it in Tennessee? Yeah. Um, we've always made money. That's I mean, great. we've always made a good profit. And and this is a funny story. So the regionals back when that was a thing, um, you know, came to Nashville mm-hmm. two years in a yep. row. So the first year it came here, we had always wanted to go, um, but the travel part of it. And then I remember what the booths were like four grand or something at that point for a 10 by 10. I was like, there's no way we can afford that. That's just absurd. 
So my buddy Jeremy takes his American Express out, swipes it. So we're going. For $4,500. For forty five. I'm like, dude, I, what if we can't pay it back? We'll deal with that later. He's like, we're going. We have to go. And it was literally an all-in, you know, like you push all your chips in on black. We're either going to be in business next week or we're going to be out of business next week. It's like we can't not go. Yeah. Yeah. And it was more risk and not going. Dude, it was the most insane. We, we leveraged. I, I did a lot of crazy promotions around town, like putting stickers on meals at all these meal prep companies for 20% off and all this stuff just to hedge our bets. And uh, this one local company did like a voodoo gumbo as one of their paleo meals that week and had the sticker on there. We had lines at our tent all day, every day. All these other clothing vendors were so freaking pissed at us. It was hilarious. Hey, step up your game. Do better. Step up your game. But it's that momentum that just carried forth every year. The uh, how many. Because this is something, so you brought up something there, which is like, they, this was a marketing expense for you guys, right? Mm-hmm. And this is something I don't think a lot of box owners can like wrap their brains around that well. Um, but talk to me like with regard to like do's and don'ts with regard to designs, just basic principles with regard to that. Or do you have it? Don't overthink yeah. it. Yeah. Don't okay. That's where it. I was going to go. Yeah. It's not a, especially for a gym. It, there, you could put, you know, just your name and handwriting on a shirt and people will buy it because they're buying you, the coach. They're buying you, the gym owner. They're buying the experience of, hey, it's it's like colors. Like if you know if you're in a, a motorcycle gang, right? It's your colors. I'm not. Yeah, you are. Okay. So you, it's a tricycle gang. <laughs> yeah, I saw your moped Vespa. Vespa. pulled up. It's a Vespa. It's yeah. a Vespa gang. <laughs> it's a Vespa guys. Uh, it's teal. It's not blue. <laughs> That sounds Have a you lot seen like it? Just, I know. <laughs> What's going on? He did his research before the episode. He, did, he checked me out. Yeah, I did my research. Unlike you, didn't know who it was. Ron Magoo. Berg. What's your name? Jeremy Brassard. It is. Yeah. Hey. Anyway. It's good old Jeremy. What a good Jeremy. partner. What'd you call him? Was it Brassard? Son of a bitch. Is that wrong? Oh, yep. yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. What do you guys? What is it? You what is it? I don't even think he gave his last name. Just go back and watch the episode. Yeah, we'll catch it later. What's his name? Jeremy Gossett. So everybody needs a Jeremy in their life. Yeah. I need a partner like Jeremy. Um, but I think that's cool. That's something Fern and I and Marcus talk about all the time. It's like, don't overthink it. Yeah. We started this entire company by hitting record. On nothing quite like this on a Mac. I was standing in my closet. I don't know where Fern was, but it was just like, let's do this thing. Well, that you have to start somewhere. somewhere. You know, I, I just start. I, this is this is gonna sound terrible, and I'm not calling somebody out, but. Do it. I got a buddy of mine. I'm not going to give names. Give a name. I'm not giving names. Okay. I got a buddy of mine. He's always talking about. It's Jeremy. No, it's not Jeremy. <laughs> I wish he was here. Y'all get it. You think I'm crazy. This get this dude. We do think you're I'm crazy. the calm one. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, anyway, this guy's just always, we're, we're about to do some stuff. It's going to change things, but it's always the talk. Nothing yeah. happens. I'm like, just start. He's like, we're planning. I was like, you can have the greatest plan, but if you have no execution, it's nothing. It's yeah. not worth anything. It's not it's not a great idea. It's it's it doesn't matter how great the idea is. If you don't tell anybody, it doesn't exist. You have to try it and see what happens yes. in order to make that first course correction. Like there and, it's the same thing with coaching. And failing's good. It's it's required. Un, it's yeah, it's unavoidable. Like there's no scenario in which you're going to navigate that and not have failure. Well think about take a win. Do you learn do you take lessons from your wins or your lessons from your losses? More from the losses. Of course. All I do is win. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Well, I mean, you're the one guy. <laughs> but everybody else there. T- <laughs> Me, I, I screw up all the time. No, we've all screwed I, up plenty. And, and I'm Just, like, yeah. ah, I learned the lesson. But if I have the big win, I'm on that hive. Dude, I killed this. I did, you know, I don't think back. But on those failures. Okay, but tell us this before we wrap up. Yeah. What would be a win for you at the games this year? One million dollars. One million dollars. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. uh, let's see. A win. Man, it's just, it's always seeing new people. You know, um, it's not, you know, as long as you make a profit that's uh, or a uh, break even at an event like that, that's, that's really all you can really want. Seeing new people and seeing them jazzed up when they walk in that tent. 
because it's a show. I mean, if you've been to our tent, mm -hmm. it's a show. It's not like somebody sitting over there, you know, sitting behind a table. You walk in there and they're like, what, what you doing? You oh, know? yeah, they're great. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. I mean, they, people are good people. Because, you know, motion creates emotion and high energy is, you know, makes everybody excited and they're happy mm -hmm. to be there and they're going to be more motivated to buy something cool. So look into this camera. You're going to have a lot of these listeners, a lot of these people watching these videos at the CrossFit Games this okay. year. Okay, yeah. Give them your pitch right here to come see you at the Barbell Voodoo Tent. 100% off every shirt, that type of <sighs> what? stuff. Oh, whatever you want to say. Come see us at the CrossFit Games in Madison, Wisconsin. One final year, one final dance in Madison, Wisconsin. This son of a bitch will not be in our booth. <laughs> <laughs> but he you will pay for your shirt. But he will pay for your shirt. He lost everybody. He lost everybody. They're coming. Yep. Um, thanks for having us. This was great. I'm glad we were yeah. able to connect while we were here. Uh, some that worked good out stuff good, in here. It? Yeah. And then, um, you know, if gyms want to reach out to you, can they reach out to you? Just for, Absolutely. Okay. Barbellvoodoo at Gmail goes straight to me. Um, if you need custom shirts for your gym, that's where to go. If you got an idea that, you, hey, you should put this on a shirt. Send it there, Barbell Voodoo at Gmail, Instagram, Barbell Voodoo, TikTok, Barbell Voodoo, uh, Farmers Only, Barbell Voodoo, uh, <laughs> all those. <laughs> only fans? Only, only fans. Ooh, nice. What's your yeah. only fans? Yeah. Barbell Voodoo. Bar <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode, and we want to thank our partner and sponsor, O2. If you're an affiliate owner and have questions about carrying O2 in your facility or interested in a free refrigerator, go to wholesale.drinko2.com forward slash pages forward slash best dash hour dash offer for more details. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.